Hey guys, uh, welcome to our second look at NVIDIA's new GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. And before I get started, I need to say that uh, after posting the video the other day where I pronounced it T70 Ti the entire time, somebody in the comments corrected me and I didn't believe them at first. Because back in 2011 when the 560 Ti came out, that's when NVIDIA finally brought back the titanium after a long hiatus. And back then, I remember talking to somebody at NVIDIA about how it's pronounced, TI versus TI. Because it's titanium, it's easy to understand maybe it'll be called TI because that's how titanium begins in sound. But I asked, uh, following the video, I asked the head of PR for NVIDIA and he told me he pronounces it TI. So I knew I was a little wrong there. Then I contacted somebody else who happened to be the product manager for the 560 Ti when it first came out, and he told me it's definitively Ti. So there we go. I don't know how I got it as Ti in my head that whole time, but I'm very sorry for the inaccuracy, and it's going to be very hard to uh, not make that mistake for this video. In our last look at the 1070 Ti, there was only synthetic benchmarks, 3 Mark, uh, Cadzilla, as well as uh, Superposition from Unigen. Uh, those kind of serve a little bit of a purpose. They just give you a bare bones standard kind of metric of how things scale, but it's not as good as real world benchmarking um, or using real games rather. Some benchmarks we use, we uh, manually benchmark. Some are just uh, time demos for the sake of ease. Uh, before I got underway with this latest test suite, I had plans to introduce nine games, but for this review, there's only gonna be seven games because two had to be dropped for various reasons. Rise of the Tomb Raider is one of them. I loved benchmarking with that game. I think it's a beautiful game, but it's dropped because it just delivers really sporadic results. The averages are not too bad, but they're usually like, can be five frames per second off each run. So it's just not very accurate, especially when you consider it's a time demo that repeats the same thing over and over. You don't really know why there's variances like that. Uh, there's especially variances on the minimum frame rates for Rise of the Tomb Raider. One run could be 30 frames a second minimum. Another run could be literally one frame per second. So it's, I just don't want to deal with that anymore. And as an aside, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is kind of similar in that way. Actually, those two games are really strange because when you open them and configure them, you'd swear they're based on the exact same game engine, but they're not. Uh, and both of them exhibit the same kind of issues on the minimum FPS front, but Deus Ex isn't as bad. So Rise of the Tomb Raider is gone, and also I wanted to include Wolfenstein to replace Doom for a Vulcan test. That did not go too well. Um, obviously, there's no built-in benchmark for that game. You can't use Fraps or anything like that because it's a Vulcan game. You have to use Present Mon, and so to use Present Mon, you have to Alt-Tab back into the game after you run your script and just wait a little bit and then start going. Well, the problem with Wolfenstein is that it's so abysmal on NVIDIA hardware right now it's just, it's not even, it's fu it's the least fun I've had benchmarking a game in quite some time, I can tell you that. Um, if you alt-tab using an NVIDIA GPU, there's probably about a 20% chance you can tab back in without hassle. If you change the resolution, 40% uh, chance, I'd say, about, uh, there's a chance that it'll actually do it successfully. Uh, and this is strictly on NVIDIA GPUs. On the uh, Steam forums, community forums, there's a thread there from the developer talking about uh, potential fixes and it's all related to NVIDIA GPUs and I can confirm that because when I moved over to the Vega 56 for the testing here I had absolutely no issues whatsoever with Wolf Wolfenstein I could alt tab uh, as much I could brute force it alt tab change the resolution do whatever I could just try to break it but no it's, it's perfectly solid compared to NVIDIA which is just awful and I did talk to NVIDIA a little bit about it. They didn't tell me who's at fault, per se, and I don't know if it's going to be a driver fix, ultimately, that fixes it, or a game update. And I don't even know when uh, a fix is due on either side. So hopefully it's going to be within the next week, because I know there are gamers out there on NVIDIA right now wanting to play the game. They paid 60 bucks for it, or even more, and they can't even play it. So it's kind of ridiculous. So for this review, we're just going to stick to seven other games. And in the future, once those... Once I find another one to replace Rise of the Tomb Raider, I'll do that. And once Wolfenstein becomes reliable, I'll start benchmarking that. Because I actually do want to include that, especially since it's the only Vulcan test. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be testing a total of seven games uh, across four resolutions and also four GPUs. On the GPU front, I'm including the cards that surround the 1070 Ti. So the 1080, 1070, 
and also uh, AMD's Vega 56. Um, I'd love to include way more than that, but as I'm traveling this week, I just had limited time to benchmark more. Um, but the bases are covered with those four GPUs. Um, and they also are benchmarked using the latest uh, drivers from both AMD and NVIDIA, so it's as up-to-date information as possible. The driver is 388 by 13 for NVIDIA and then 17.10.3 for AMD. Um, so including those four GPUs takes care of that little, takes care of our bases there. So for resolutions, we're going to be testing uh, 1080p, the standard, 1440p, which I find the card to be best suited for, 1070 Ti I'm talking about. Uh, also going to include 3440 by 1440 ultra wide resolution, which is personally my favorite resolution go-to for sure, as well as 4K because you can't not have 4K. One thing I will mention is that this video does not have any synthetic benchmarks at all, only because they were taken care of in the video I posted last week and also the article on the website last week. Um, so you're not going to find 3D Mark or Unigen or Catzilla here. Uh, if that information is important to you, I'd just recommend going to look back at that video or article. The benefit to that article is that there's more than four GPUs tested. Uh, there's our entire stack, so from the RX 550 on the bottom all the way up to the Titan X on top. Um, actually, there's a 1080 Ti SLI at the top, so you can kind of see the full picture that way. But for this video, it's strictly on the seven games used for testing, uh, as well as power results. So um, overclocking, I didn't get to tackle this time, but I might just follow up on a news post, or I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens there, because it has been tackled to death by other people. Um, ordinarily, uh, a review like the one I posted last week would have the full-fledged results. There wouldn't be two videos, but I was just kind of ill-prepared for this one a little bit. So I'm going to focus, just leave that one uh, to the side there, and I'll just continue on with the gaming results here. So speaking of, let's just jump into them, shall we? With Battlefield 1 at both 1080p and 1440p, every single GPU here handles the game like it's a joke. NVIDIA's GTX 1070 fell behind the Vega 56, and the 1070 Ti corrects NVIDIA's problem there. Even at the ultra-wide resolution of 3440 by 1440 every single GPU here handles the game without much fuss, although I should emphasize that this doesn't take into account online play. But, if that becomes a problem, the game has a ton of dials to turn down just in case. At 4K, the going gets tough, but all four GPUs perform admirably enough. It will probably require a GTX 1080 Ti to crack the 60 frames per second mark with this one. I mentioned earlier that Rise of the Tomb Raider can give sporadic minimum FPS results, and the same can be said about Deus Ex Mankind Divided, although as also mentioned, it's to a far reduced extent. Still, I trust its average FPS report more than its minimum, so for this one I'm sticking to just displaying the one result. Again, at both 1080p and 1440p, the 1080 Ti and every single other GPU here handles the game without issue, at very high detail overall. Even the GTX 1070 can handle the game at 60 frames per second, which is pretty good given just how beautiful it is. As always, our ultra-wide and 4K resolution can dramatically add to the workload of these GPUs, but ultimately all of them work fine at ultra-wide, although for some GPUs you may wish to reduce a setting or two. At 4K, a lot of TLC will be needed to get you to 60 frames per second. It's worth noting that throughout all of the resolutions here, AMD's Vega 56 performed extremely well, leading the pack in all but the 1080p test. Sniper Elite 4 is the second AMD sponsored game in our lineup, and right off the bat, we see the Vega 56 sneaking up behind the 1070 Ti. Ultimately, we're seeing the same kind of result with Sniper Elite 4 that we did with Deus Ex Mankind Divided, in that all of the GPUs perform exceptionally well, although 4K changes the picture for every single one. Fortunately, Sniper Elite 4 has a slew of graphical knobs to fine-tune, so finding 60 frames per second at 4K with any one of these GPUs shouldn't prove too difficult. It's again worth noting that AMD has performed very well here. If not matching the 1070 Ti in the average, it at least keeps up on the minimum. Wildlands is NVIDIA's domain, and it doesn't take much looking at these results to figure that out. Ultimately, NVIDIA dominates every single test, although AMD's Vega 56 does put up a good fight. At ultra-wide and 4K, AMD's card actually manages to surpass the GTX 1070, and with that being the case, the 1070 Ti only improves NVIDIA's standpoint. If I had to wager why AMD performs so well at high resolutions here, it could be that its 410GB per second frame buffer is just that much better than the 1070 and 1070 Ti's 256GB per second frame buffer, although a gain of 1 or 2 frames per second isn't really anything to write home about. I think we should purge the can it run crisis question and move over to can it run total war? 
because this is consistently one series that completely brutalizes what we think to be high-end hardware. As long as you're running with the ultra detail profile, that is, all four of our GPUs hover around 60 frames per second at 1080p, which doesn't bode well for every other resolution tested. In a way, this game might be a little too grueling, but it's nice to know that we will have one that'll actually last for the long haul. It'll still push GPUs for a couple of generations, at least hopefully. At 1440p, the gameplay overall is decent, but it's not what I'd consider entirely playable. At ultra wide and 4K, some serious compromises need to be made, which in Total War isn't going to be too challenging since you can adjust an entire profile at once, or fiddle around with all of the dials provided. It might not be as grueling as the war-torn Total War Warhammer War Edition, but Watch Dogs 2 is still pretty demanding on a system's hardware, and truthfully, that's so much the case that I'm not even sure there's any GPU configuration that could handle the game at 4K or even ultra-wide at, at absolutely max detail. In particular, the San Francisco Fog option is pretty OP on graphics performance. At 1080p, no GPU here worries too much, but at 1440p, only the 1070 Ti and 1080 deliver really close to 60 frames per second performance. It might not be too surprising to see AMD's card fall to the back here, since this is one of the NVIDIA sponsored titles in our lineup. At ultra wide and 4K, no GPU is ideal for gaming with the settings chosen, but yet again, this is a title with a ton of graphical options to tweak, and if you happen to use NVIDIA and GeForce Experience, finding the quote, perfect, unquote game settings for your particular configuration won't be much trouble. Thanks to the benchmarking article and video we put out a week or so ago, Destiny 2 is the only game in our current test suite that has the full collection of cards tested, and that's precisely why I've left it for last. Destiny 2 simply isn't a game that requires a high-end PC, so at 1080p, even the lowly GTX 1050 non-TI from NVIDIA will deliver admirable performance, although I'd quicker recommend the TI model anyway for the added VRAM. Since a card like the 1070 Ti delivers 90 frames per second at 1440p in Destiny 2, it's a card really suitable for ultra-wide in this particular game. There, it delivers 71 frames per second, and we're talking about a nearly maxed out detail in a game that's downright gorgeous at times. Even though Destiny 2 isn't officially an NVIDIA sponsored title, and that it's not a the way it's meant to be played, NVIDIA has definitely pushed it nonetheless, and maybe that's because its GPU performance dominates the charts against its competition. At 4K, all of the GPUs seen here deliver admirable enough performance, although for this 1070 Ti and Vega 56 in particular, you'd want to be dropping a couple of settings to improve things a bit further. 60 frames per second isn't required in every game, but I'd wager it kind of is in a game like Destiny. Once you experience the fluidity of 60 frames per second in a fast-paced game like this, you won't want to go back. To help wrap things up, here's some quick and dirty power testing results. Unfortunately, I meant to include temperature results here too, but I realized too late how to dramatically improve them, so they're being held off on for now. Immediately interesting here is the fact that the 1070 Ti drew more power than the GTX 1080. It's either a fluke, or just the fact that the 1070 Ti is aggressively spec to win over the Vega 56 without a benefit of a doubt. Overall, that's the case more often than it's not, but the Vega 56 still does draw quite a bit more power than the others. If you compare the 1070 to the Vega 56, the differences are enormous, but if you compare the TI to the Vega, the delta between them doesn't seem quite as severe. So there we have the results. Do my opinions change from the synthetic video? Not really. Um, not too much actually on anything but the Vega 56 if I'm honest. Um, when I first took a look at the Vega 56 back when it first came out, it it, it leveled out really well against the 1070. Um, and I don't know if it's just because of my games chosen or if AMD's made really good driver strides since then, but across all of these results, Vega 56 performs extremely well versus the GTX 1070. So, and even the 1070 Ti in some cases. Um, so it's a very, it, it's a very fierce competitor uh, at its SRP of uh, 399. But that brings us to the, the big problem. When we posted the last video and article, um, we noticed that a lot of Vega cards on Newegg and even Amazon and other retailers were priced a little bit more aggressively than we've seen in recent months. And by more aggressively, I mean cards were suddenly 100 or $150 off. Whereas about a month ago, you could buy, or even a couple of weeks ago, uh, liquid-cooled Vega 64 would be $700. I actually saw one the other day for 510 which is actually a bit of a steal for such a cool card like that. It's a limited edition, so if anybody caught that and was able to snatch it up in time, then congratulations. But 
this is the real problem with trying to wrap up a video card review nowadays is that the price we're given is never the price you see online ever almost almost never uh so we're told 449 from nvidia and 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 i believe it's going to hold true at least on nvidia's own website it's selling its founders edition there for 449 and it's adamant about the fact that it's not going to be changing and nvidia is promoting that uh wordage on purpose because they just want to make AMD continue to look pretty bad with uh, the pricing. Although I don't think AMD needs any help because uh, honestly, if a GTX 1080 can be had for about $510, why would you spend $600 on a Vega 64, which draws more power and uh, generally will run hotter and possibly louder? Although the Founders Editions cards are just, their coolers are pretty junk. So if you're going reference for reference, I don't say one's really better than the other, although I do kind of like the aesthetic value of NVIDIA's card. So ultimately, at SRP, Vega 56 is 399 and the 1070 Ti is 449 And they're priced fairly, I think, given how they scale in the games. But, as I said, those probably aren't the prices you're going to be finding on places like Newegg. So you're just going to have to use your better judgment based on the results here based on your personal needs, based on the resolution you want to play, uh, and just based on the deal you can get. It, there might be cases where the Vega 56 will prove to be a better deal, although it just seems extremely unlikely right now, given the mining craze and whatever else has just skyrocketed prices. Um, prior to the 1070 Ti review, like I said, I saw GTX 1050 or 1080, I think it was a mini ITX version, but either way, it was $510 which at the time was significantly less than even a Vega 56. So you just really have to play the market, I guess, which is unfortunate. Gamer, it's it's always been pretty difficult to get cards at SRP, but now it's even it's 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 almost hard to even conclude on a graphics card because you just never know what price is going to be found online. So there you have it. The TI is a great card. I would suggest it for anybody who's planning to play 1080p at really high frame rates or uh, 1440p. If you want 1080p strictly and you don't need super high frame rates, you just need 60, um, the TI is too much card. Actually, all of them are too much card for that resolution. I, I ideally target it at 1440p um, and also ultra wide though. Ultra wide, it performed extremely well. Same with the Vega 56. You might have to reduce some settings once in a while, but again, it's not a big deal. It's a pretty good value for a card that can power 3440 by 1440. 4K is just don't even think about it. Um, unless you're playing a specific game that runs really well on it, like maybe Destiny, you can just reduce some settings. Um, but it's definitely not a 4K graphics card by any standard. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I wouldn't give that tag to any other card except the 1080 Ti uh, or higher. So this is the ultimate 1080p card, I would say. Um, that's, not disc that's just on NVIDIA's own uh lineup i'm not including amd there the vega 56 is still good but you know my thoughts on that so ultimately it's going to come down to pricing maybe feature set if you enjoy things like geforce experience shadow play more than amd's implementation on things that could weigh into things as well but i don't know i think i provided enough information for you to make your own choice based on what you can find in on details so good luck in your search as always thank you for watching and if you enjoy this kind of content, please uh, hit the subscribe button because we're definitely planning to deliver quite a bit more as time goes on. Thank you for watching.